Okay, last question's on me then. Um, it's talking about the struggle then. Um, how, what, what is the best thing that we can do to really find that balance um, with, between Dean and Dunya? And, and really in trying to, to re pretty much win, on, win in most of the struggles that we have. And sometimes, you know, of course, you're going to be talking about shaitan in the next class. So, yeah. you know, is, 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 that, is that also one of the, the biggest fights that we have when it comes to, you know, doing what is right and, and being pulled back into something that, that might put you into sin again? Like, for right. example, like, you know, with music and, and dancing, like for me, like, I yeah. love dancing. Yeah. And I've always been like, you know what, maybe I want to go back and I want to start dancing again and I want to play the music and I want to, you know, do what I used to do. But then in my heart, I'm like, if I do that, I know I'm going to, I love it so much. It could lead, lead me to something else. So, <coughs> so that's my question. How do you find that balance and how do you, how do you fight against these thoughts? And then again, is it wrong for me to feel this way? Like, you know? So, um... <laughs> okay. Pretty loaded question. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's wrong for me. I need about 45 minutes. 45 minutes, <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, I think I'll, 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 give, you a, I'll give you a start. I'll give okay. you a start. I'll put okay. you up you on the right. I think it starts with knowing and understanding yourself and knowing and understanding your weaknesses and knowing and understanding your desires. Right? When you know and understand your desires, you know where to concentrate, where to work, and where to fight, and where to struggle. Okay. So the fact that you're like, I enjoy this stuff, and it's, it's a trial for me, or whatever, I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. right? And I think a lot of times people just, they just put themselves in a position where they're like, oh, I'm done, whatever, what else I can. But when you recognize that, you know that this is where you need to be careful. Mm -hmm. And this is where you need to be aware. This is where you need, to, you need to protect yourself. So you, for example, if that's a trial for you, you need to be more cautious in that area than someone else, for example, who's like, yeah, music's not really my thing. My thing is I enjoy X, Y, and Z that is not hadad, for example. Okay. Right? So that's where they need to be vigilant, and that's where they need to work at. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, that's what I would say, that at, 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 at least understanding your weaknesses and being honest with yourself. There's a concept known as uh, al-muhasaba, uh, taking account of yourself, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Where you, subhanAllah, you, uh, and this is something we're supposed to be actually be doing daily, where you, you look, reflect upon your life daily and be like, you know, have I made progress? Have I not made progress? What's going on? What, and then taking practical steps to make progress. I think one of the problems is that sometimes we feel or we assume that our iman is going to like go up on its own somehow, right? That you know you're either once again you're either a good Muslim or a bad Muslim, or you're either you're, you're you're doing okay or not. That's not how it works. The more you put into it, the more you work, the more you, for example, educate yourself, the more you work on that knowledge, the closer you're going to get to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So really, like taking account of your life and say, listen, these are my weaknesses. This is where I need to improve, and then these are the practical steps I need to take to get closer to Allah in this place. Mm -hmm. And that's you know different for all of us. It's different for all of us. Yeah. Short answer. Short thank answer. You. I'll just uh, okay. I'll just say a couple things. Uh, first and foremost, thank you for having me. Uh, it's been an absolute pleasure. It's been a blast. Um, I'm actually very jealous of all of you, and I'm jealous of Malaysia because I wish we had this in America. Like I, I honestly, I, mean, I was talking to somebody on the way here, and I was saying. Uh, Malaysia, every time I come, come here, it just blows my mind. Like how, you know, talking about balance and all that, like I see so much balance in Malaysia. And mm -hmm. I see Muslims living peacefully, calmly, and and I, I feel like Islam, Islam isn't like, and I know there might, it might be, you might have that here, but being politically charged and this and that and preconceived notions and then everybody pulling you in 10 different directions and all that, and it's like, I see a lot of Malaysians and they're like, they, they may not be religious themselves, but at least they'll look at a religious person and be like, yeah, I see that. I can appreciate it, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's something you have going for you in your, in your society, at least as far as I can tell. Um, so coming here, subhanAllah, it, it makes me so happy just, just to see this and just to see, just seeing young Muslims that, you know, and, and wanting to get closer to Allah and, and, that, and wanting and diving into that struggle head first and, and especially seeing people from the music industry, subhanAllah, like these questions that you're asking me, wallah, it makes me so happy. Right, it makes me so happy that, you know, I just, I, I, I think back in my life and, you know, when I was in the music industry and, you know, I was like, I wish I, I, I could be amongst these type of people, you know, yeah, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but my, my final piece of advice would be, you know, 
the struggle lasts your whole life. Uh, don't ever give up. Don't ever think, um, you know, it's it's too late. You're gonna stumble. You're gonna fall. It's gonna happen. You're gonna you're gonna be you're gonna have days where you're doing amazing. You're gonna have days where you're gonna feel horrible. You're gonna have days when you're like, I'm not a good Muslim. You're gonna have days where you're gonna feel great. That is life. It goes up and down. That that is the nature of life. Just never give up. It's about never giving up. Shaytan, he only truly wins against us when he convinces us to give up. So as long as you haven't given up, you're defeating Shaytan and you're on the right path. Right? There is not one ayah, there are many ayat in the Quran uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the believers and says, those of you, oh those of you who believe, uh, never give up in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Allah forgives all sins. And then you have subhanAllah um, hadith Qudsi where the Prophet tells us that Allah has told us that and subhanAllah, this is like one of my favorite hadith. The Prophet says that Allah has said that my servant will go commit a sin and then come to me and ask for me for forgiveness and I will forgive them. And then he says, Wala ubadi, like I don't care. Meaning it means nothing to me, right? To forgive his sin, it means nothing. And then he'll go back and commit the same sin again and he'll come back to me and ask me for forgiveness and I will forgive him again and I don't care, it means nothing to me. And then he'll go back and commit the same sin again and come back and ask me for forgiveness and I'll forgive him again, it means nothing to me. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that, and the person can go back and keep sinning over and over again and I will keep forgiving them as long as they keep asking me for forgiveness. Right? That's subhanAllah, that is the mercy of Islam, that is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as long as we have that, alhamdulillah, we're inshallah on the right path. <laughs>